Hey everybody, this is Midnight Update. I'm Seamus Byrne. Welcome to Wednesday, 25th of March. On Monday, I spent some time at Adobe's Australian HQ with Michael Stoddart, one of their local Creative Suite gurus. I was keen to get him to show off a few of the latest improvements and new sexy tools in Creative Suite 4. But probably most importantly, I was keen to let him show just how far the Elements products have come. If you haven't been paying attention, Elements now runs on the same engine as Creative Suite, so all the renders and effects are applied just as nicely as in the full version of Photoshop or Premiere. Now from the cut down concept behind the early versions, Elements is really now on its own parallel path that even does some tasks more efficiently and effectively than Photoshop. If you need granular access to your tools, then of course Photoshop is going to be where you'll end up unless you're some kind of Adobe hater for who knows what reason. But I think Elements delivers everything 99% of photo editors will need. It keeps it all as friendly as possible, but if you really want to poke around, you can still get into layers and adjustments and masks and filters, all that sort of stuff just like in Photoshop. And then there are some awesome one-step effects and tools that are all basically pre-scripted action lists, if you know what that means, that would easily take five times as long in CS4. Look, anyway, I've babbled long enough. Here's Michael's demo of some of the cool features in Photoshop CS4, along with a look inside Photoshop Elements 7. With Photoshop CS4 too, with any, any new release, a lot of people want to show us the brand new features. And, um, and then over time, they realize that one of the uh, best features are things that aren't immediately obvious, but that change the workflow. Yeah, yeah. And in this case, because we use the GPU of, of computers, it speeds up immeasurably. So what used to actually take a load on the process is something as simple as zooming into 100% like that and then zooming to fit in window is now almost instantaneous because the GPU is doing the work. Mm. And it also means that um, rotating an image, and you, you rotate an image a lot when you're trying to debetch or mask something. Every time you rotate an image the old way, you actually had to recalculate the pixels. And so you ended up softening the image. The more you rotate it, you actually soften the image. So um, that was always um, a challenge, whereas now we use the GPU. What we've got is this uh, uh, new functionality called content-aware scaling, and it uses the seam carving algorithm uh, that was developed um, by these gentlemen who now work for us. So what it does is it analyzes the image, and as I move that right-hand side together, you can see that the image, the main parts of the image don't um, yeah. contract. Uh, so it allows me to change the proportion of that image and to do something that normally, I could have done it in previous versions, it just would have taken so much time to do. <coughs> the example we tend to use is this one here where I have, um, this is going to go both online and in print and it's the same image requirement. So again, traditionally uh, I would have had to well, scale this, uh, and that wouldn't have worked. Um, so I would have had to do a lot of retouching and a lot of manipulation uh, to get the result. And I would have eventually hit that result, not a, not a question. But what I can do now with content-aware scale is, first of all, turn that layer on so you can see it, is with content-aware scale, do exactly the same tasks in terms of moving the image. But this time, Photoshop uh, is using the algorithm to see what is important data and what is not important data and allows me to end up with the final result much quicker. That's what we normally would have got and that's what we're now able to have um, you know, immediately. Uh, it's not a video editing application, it's a video um, uh, compositing or video tools. Now we can, we can do it with standard video. Again, we use QuickTime's uh, ingest and outgest. Uh, so any codec that QuickTime uses, we will we'll read in Photoshop. It links to the file. Yeah. So if you want to do something as simply as um, uh, applying effects over the top of video, um, uh, let me uh, say, for example, here, we'll just do a, um, a very quick, um, I wonder what do I'll do an adjustment layer, hue saturation adjustment layer up the top. So I'll make I'll fake up a sepia here. So we'll just do a, a quick calibrate. Okay. Um, that gives me a layer and I can simply change the opacity there, go back here, change that to zero. Uh, a few frames okay. forward. I've now um, been able to use a tool that I'm very comfortable with, which is which is Photoshop, to uh, manipulate video and work with video. Yeah. Photoshop elements does actually tell you what something does and how to do it. So some of these, um, 
for example, um, keystone distortion. We have on the right, there on screen in front of you, a description of what it is you're trying to do and, and what the problem is and what you're trying to solve. And you can read through that. So it's not, you get a lot of low end editors where one click does something, but you've no idea what it's doing and you don't know how to edit it afterwards. Whereas we're very upfront, we tell you what it does and then we say, okay, step one, click this. And this, if you know with Photoshop, is the same as the full power of Photoshop. This is this is the Photoshop um, correct distortion tool, okay? And it doesn't um, tear the pixels, it doesn't blend, um, bleed the pixels and so on, so it uses that. And then of course you can, you can crop it. Where, because Photoshop Elements is based on Photoshop, it's always non-destructive. We can always go back and, um, and reset to the original file. Okay. We call it Scene Cleaner. And so what I'm going to do is, you often take or tourist remover, people have started to call yep. it. Mm -hmm. um, and this is again based on the technology in, in full version of Photoshop, but much easier to use in Photoshop Elements. Uh, I'm just going to select new, and as we saw before, we've had group shots and faces and panoramas. With, so this was, yeah. you know, our, our um, 3D, uh, sorry, our panorama stitching, our faces and group shot in previous versions. In this particular version, we've got Photo Merge Scene Cleaner. And what Scene Cleaner does is it it helps me through the process. It, it doesn't so much automate it because um, uh, you can't really automate it, but it makes it so much easier for me to work. So this is putting all those things together. The instructions on the right hand side, you've got a lot more control. It tells you what to do. So I'm going to use this as the source and I'm going to drag this over the top. So this is going to be my finished version over here and this is the source. So often I'll have two or three where they've got, there are good bits, but I want to put them all together into one. Yeah. And again, a lot of people will be taught how to um, um, cut and paste or mask into other images and build up composites. We're going to do it much easier. The instructions on what to do for, sit on the right, but it's really um, a great demo because it's just a wow feature. I'm just going to paint, not accurately, just over the top of this guy here, and that tells Photoshop Elements to get from this, the source image, and place it over the top. And I get a seamless, let me zoom in there so you can see it a little bit easier. A seamless result. So I continue doing the same thing. I am going to just get the pencil tool, and again, I'm going to paint over the woman here in the background. Elements looks at the source image over here, removes that woman in the background. Now I have a problem here, I have a guy in the background here and I have a guy in the background there. So I'm going to swap sources. I'm actually going to use what, what is now building up to be my original. But again, over here, just paint over the background. So I can use the previous source as the source. And when you have a look at that there, yeah. you can do that in Photoshop but it's going to take so much more time and the result is identical to the pro Photoshop version because it is Photoshop, it's just Photoshop elements and it's a cracker of a product, I really love it. Ever notice Adobe always finds one super hot new feature to throw into each release? Content aware scaling, I think is a stunner. Also it's really cool to note that one of CS3's best new features is already appearing in elements in the form of scene cleaner because that's such a powerful tool for family and travel photos. Now tomorrow I'll show similar demos for the video tools, that is Premiere Pro CS4 and Premiere Elements. That's all for tonight's update, thanks for stopping by. Join us weeknights around midnight Sydney time for Daily Geek News and for more coverage visit midnightupdate.com.